have we truly found the fastest way to manifest? I'm currently on a hunt for that because I've manifested many, many things so far, but they always take a certain amount of time. But I have come across a method where apparently you literally manifest for 16 hours and then it comes true shortly after. I have never tried this method before. This is to do with robotic affirming, something that I haven't actually tried fully just yet. I have done robotic affirmations inside an app where I count the amount of times I've done the affirmation, but I haven't done it for 16 hours straight, that's for sure. But this method is actually something that someone called Robert Milliken has done and apparently he was taught this as one of Neville Goddard's students. And Robert Milliken, after doing this specific manifestation method, apparently then became a millionaire afterwards. And in Neville's words, he died with everything he ever wanted, everything he was manifesting. And he only did it for 16 hours. Listen guys, if I could do, if you could manifest for millions and millions and millions of pounds, say for instance you manifest winning the lottery, and all it takes is you to take a day off work, or a day off doing anything at all, and you literally just do this for 16 hours, we would literally all have everything we could ever want. I mean, let's be real, we're all trying to manifest money, right? Because money can buy so many things, like money, buys you freedom. Everybody wants money. So this guy did manifest money and he in fact manifested millions. So what did he do? So apparently Robert Milliken sat in a room for 16 hours and did robotic affirmations. He robotically affirmed one sentence over and over and over with not even a glass of water in this room. He literally ate nothing, drank nothing for 16 hours and literally just sat there and robotically affirmed this. Guys, first of all, the willpower there. Oh my God, I don't think I could do that, but that might be a limiting belief. You never know what we can do. We don't really know what we're capable of until we try it. So this is the affirmation he repeated. He said, I have a steady, Sorry, I have a lavish, steady, dependable income consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. This is what he repeated over and over and over in a room. But this experiment is making me want to try this method. So um, yeah, I might decide by the end of the video if I'm gonna try this or not, not for 16 hours, a lot less than that, but nevertheless, I might try it. So this is what he did in the room. And apparently after that, he also, he became a millionaire and he also won a Nobel prize. So whatever his passions were, I assume he made a lot of money through doing what he loves because of these affirmations. And he basically just sat there and allowed no room for any other thoughts. So this is also why this is working. Like why, why did this work for him, right? A lot of people might think maybe his mind wondered. Maybe his what mind did wonder, but when you're physically saying something out loud, for instance, right, first of all, <laughs> Neville doesn't specifically say whether he affirmed it out loud or in his brain, but I would suggest obviously doing it out loud if possible, if you're not with anyone. Doing it out loud, it kind of like, it makes your body vibrate, right? You physically talk, you can feel it in your throat, you can feel it in your heart, you know, you're saying it with your chest. It has so much more power, but if you can do it out loud with your chest for 16 hours, there's no room for any other thoughts. There's no room for anything else, in fact, when you're literally saying it out loud. So your brain would quickly come back to that thought. The only thing he would probably have to prevent is falling asleep, but it would be good if he was in a sleepy state. For instance, if he sat up against a wall and it was almost impossible to fall asleep because of the p posture that he was in, then it would mean that he could fall into a deep relaxation state, AKA theta brainwave state, and therefore be reprogramming his subconscious mind for those 16 hours or many of those hours. And therefore that's why it probably has worked for him is because that would be a really, really, really effective method to affirm. For instance, in now nowadays, we might do cleaning, cooking, whilst affirming, but you're in an alpha brainwave state, which is meanings that, which means that your conscious brain is always still at play and you're more likely to be pulled out of thought. But 
it worked so well for him because he was just doing that exact thing and he did nothing. He never had water, he never had food. I'm not saying go without water and food, but he did nothing but affirm. So he probably was very relaxed for those 16 hours and that probably is why it worked even better. So if you do do this, try and sit in a room, but if not, then at least, you know, just try and to do something that doesn't take away your attention too much. Basically, in terms of scientific evidence, this is why it also worked, because I've got my notes down here. <laughs> it gives the reticular activating system something to look for. So your reticular activating system is basically a part of your brain that supports your ego. We have the id and the ego, right? The ego is obviously something that your brain tries to protect because without a good ego it means we've got a lack in self-confidence and we have a bad self-concept. So your reticular activating system is basically the part of your brain that searches for things to say, see, I told you so. And therefore we feel good about ourselves. We think, so look, I'm right, I'm right. Like, I'm smart, you know, and it feeds your ego. It's like a defense mechanism, your RAS. So it gives your RAS something to search for and confirm when you affirm all of these things. So instead of, for instance, if you're 100% of the day affirming things that are completely random and even negative, then your RAS is searching for you to confirm all of those statements, those negative ones and even the random ones, which is kind of a waste, right? You want to feed it something good to look for. So this is where the robotic affirming comes in handy, especially for 16 hours, obviously. And it also helps create new neural pathways and therefore overwriting old negative ones. And again, it probably also worked really well for him because he was probably in a meditative state for 16 hours. Maybe not purposely, but just purely the fact that if you're sat in a room doing nothing, you're gonna be quite relaxed. There's nothing to do and there's nothing to focus on. So again, it's going to be really helpful to reprogram old beliefs and also form new neural pathways, which is something that Dr. Dr. Joe Dispenza is really hot on, is obviously forming those new neural pathways. And again, it's gonna be really effective at doing that by just literally sat there doing nothing for 16 hours. And it's also worked extremely, extremely fast for him, likely because he saturated his brain in these thoughts, saturated. There wasn't 50% of thoughts of the normal day. There wasn't 50% of thoughts about negative things or who's driving by or what you're gonna buy from B&M later on. Do you know what I mean? He saturated his brain for an entire day of one thought only. This is also why it has probably done so much movement in his brain in just those just that one day because guys it's not the amount of time you do it for it's actually how much you believe in it so if by the end of those 16 hours that's all it took for him to believe in that entirely that's all he needs if he could sit there and do it for one hour and it worked and he then believed it entirely that would be all he needs but the likelihood is is it might this is the thing, you might think it's a case of law of diminishing results, which basically means that like, it's like the 80-20 rule, it goes up and then you get to a certain point and then it just stabilizes. You might think it's a case of that, but in this case with the affirmations, the longer he did it, the it, it basically was probably going like this, like it wasn't that effective, then it was more effective, but then the longer he stayed in that state, it probably skyrocketed, which is another reason why it probably worked so well. Another reason why it has likely worked so damn well is due to the law of imagination. Again, something that Neville Goddard always spoke about, the law of imagination, because guys, this is one thing I have discovered, this is like me becoming wise, <laughs> is every single manifestation method has to cause you to imagine and feel in order for it to work. When you're scripting, you're imagining the scene that you're writing about. When you're affirming, you're imagining you in that state of the wish fulfilled just from the affirmation. When you're visualizing, you're obviously visualizing the end scene. You're feeling the feeling. When you're doing the 369 method, when you're doing 15 second manifestations, some people do potions. Every single one of these causes you to imagine and therefore feel. If you're wondering what method's gonna be best for you, 
whatever causes you to feel the most feelings, the deepest feelings. Yeah, I hope that helps for today. Let me know if you try this. I'll be so invested if you do. But that's it for today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!